the Pope's most beloved Protestant is Professor Dr. Thomas Schurmacher, the director of the International Institute for Religious Freedom. He's also executive chair of the Theological Commission of the World Evangelical Alliance. He's a very accomplished scholar and churchman and a wonderful uh, Protestant voice uh, for us. So please welcome Thomas Schurmacher. Um, I choose the way of uh, photos to make this very quickly. Um, fundamentalist movements in all world religions in the 1920s, Islamism, Hindutva, had the equivalent in Christianity. Don't forget, fundamentalism comes from the Christian world. Evangelicals did it. The Catholic Church in the 1920s was working against religious freedom, etc., etc. And I want to report on the process what the Christian world communities on the highest level are doing to assure that we get away from this kind of religious nationalism, that we own nations because we are the majority religion. And this has a lot to do with our topic of uh, persecution of Christians. I start 2011. You see on the stage the launch of the document Christian Witness in a Multi-Religious World. Uh, the Vatican, Cardinal Toran on the left, uh, the World Council of Churches, you see the General Secretary and the, our former General Secretary of the World Evangelical Alliance um, sitting there, and this is the launch of the first ever document signed by representatives of 2.4 billion Christians, historic in itself because even if it would have been an empty paper, it would have been historic that we talk to each other. And, uh, but the constant is an end to the Constantinian area on all levels, clearly saying mission um, always is witness. It never can use force, money, any, anything that gets people to believe who do not want to believe. And especially the major thing is mission is governed by human dignity, by human rights. Mission never can go against it. And that also means uh, the mission never can use the state to force people to believe something they do not want. Um, now, what do I do for the next picture? Yeah. So this is the next step, the Synod, uh, Vatican Synod 2012. I'm sorry, my assistant is constantly making photos, so I show up on most of those photos. But um, this is uh, 2012, the Vatican Synod, in which for the first time we spoke about that we need to go further um, beyond um, this, uh, this document on the persecution of Christians and say, uh, clearly say that we never want to have any kind of religious persecution. That is the synod again. At the same time, the World Evangelical Alliance negotiates with the World Council of Churches. This is the General Assembly in Busan, Korea. Um, believe it or not, that's me speaking up there. But what the in interesting thing is, my colleagues are here who work with this, uh, Professor Sauer, and uh, uh, the Professor Johnson, the World Council of Churches asked the World Evangelical Alliance to head up the committee on writing a document on religious extremism and persecution of Christians. So the General Assembly uh, approved it, but the document was written by the World Evangelical Alliance. This is really a changing world around our topic. So what comes next? Um, next step back to the Holy Father. Um, to show you what he eats in the morning. No, that's a, um, this is historic because of the document he holds in the hand because this is the proposal of uh, an ongoing process on um, a joint venture of all um, heads of the major churches and confessions to do something about the topic of persecution of Christians that we really get a united force. Um, a spe very special photo, you see Cardinal Koch, the um, head of the Pontifical Council of Proposing U Christian Unity for the Vatican and myself for the World Evangelical Alliance talking to six Orthodox and Eastern Orthodox patriarchs on the same topic that we need, really need to unite and that persecution of Christian is the baddest topic to discuss ecumenical problems. If we are not united in people even dying for their faith, where do we want to be united elsewhere? So this is the Coptic Pope. This is uh, the Syrian Orthodox Patriarch. So we toured. So this is, we come closer. This is the Vatican Synod that um, took place this year. And of course, that was um, in, in, in uh, agreement with the Pope. 
Um, I had the chance at the Synod to speak about the necessity to unite in persecuted questions with all the churches. Um, and this is uh, the friendly way he accepted this speech where I called upon number one, that institutional wise, we have to establish with the World Council of Churches, the Vatican, the World Evangelical Alliance, institutions that can cooperate in research and in becoming active. So this is, uh, this is the photo I like, but this, uh, uh, this was afterwards discussing what we do next. And this is one that actually happened. I have to be very quick. This now is the consultation in Tirana that was under the roof of the Global Christian Forum run by the Vatican the World Council of Churches, the World Evangelical Alliance, and we included the World Pentecostal Fellowship. So I would say that's 95 or even more percent of world Christianity. Um, and you see on the stage on the left side, the four representatives, Cardinal Koch, on behalf, he, he read the word of the Pope. He gave a very, very fine word on the, um, why we need to go together in this topic. The, our uh, the General Secretary of the World Council of Churches, the new General Secretary, Ephraim Tendero from the Philippines, and on the left, left uh, the representative of the Pentecostal uh, World Fellowship. On the right side, because it was in Albania, you see the four representatives of the same bodies within Albania. Uh, and uh, I have a second, so these are the three big bosses again. Um, for the first time ever, we had 70 people from countries of concern, top leaders reporting on the situation from all confessions, from many different countries, and 70 top people from different churches listening to this. So two days we were just listening to those stories, uh, what they had to say, and then to discuss how we could uh, reunite. And this is a new stage in our whole topic. We have discussed it yesterday already. Um, we really need to unite not in, in, in a triumphalism that now we as Christians come back to a joint power, but not to let the people alone that are suffering and to assure that in all the mess, our reaction is not a return to fundamentalism, not a strive for power that we now start to suppress the others again, but um, that, we, um, uh, that, that we really react in a Christian way. This is the, uh, the consultation again. This is the document you all get in the moment. And what makes the conference historic is especially one sentence, which the Catholic Church proposed and then all the others, of course, heartily accepted. We were applying for other religions, for other groups to stop to persecute Christians, but the sentence says, we repent of having at times persecuted each other and other religious communities in history and ask forgiveness from each other and pray for new ways of following Christ together. This is why you had so many photos of the Holy Father, because you hear him speak in this sentence. Yeah? Um, but that is historic. The Christian churches apologizing to each other, having persecuted each other, and apologizing to others that we persecuted them, and only then to ask, please stop to persecute us. And that makes it ample clear that we do not want to react with a power game, yeah, but with religious freedom for all. Thank you very much.